It's time for Florida State basketball. This is the Leonard Hamilton Show. Brought to you by Powerade, the official sports drink of the Florida State Seminoles. Powerade, power through. And by the Florida Lottery, over 30 billion and counting to education. Just imagine. And now your hosts, Gene Deckerhoff and head coach Leonard Hamilton. Welcome to the Leonard Hamilton Show. The Seminole streak continues eight in a row now after back-to-back -back wins on a road trip to Atlanta, Georgia and Clemson, South Carolina. Highlights of those two ball games on our show. And Coach, we're playing very good basketball right now, protecting the basketball, getting good performances out of the entire team, and it adds up to an eight-game win streak. Well, I think we're getting better. There's no doubt about that. We're executing a lot better on the offensive end. I think we're putting forth more, more effort on the defensive end. I still think we still can continue to improve. I think we can be more consistent with our decision making, our half court execution. It could be a little better. Uh, I think we can make better decisions. Uh, on the defensive end, uh, I think we've had moments where we played very, very good. Uh, but I, and I feel like we're getting better, but by no means I do I think that we're at our very best. Eight wins in a row in ACC play, a new school record. We go for number nine in a row against the Carolina Tar Heels Saturday at the Dean Smith Center. We'll talk about that a little later on in the show. Uh, coming up, highlights of Florida State's trip to Atlanta and a big win over the Yellow Jackets. When you looked at the schedule, Coach, coming into this season, you said, oh my goodness, we got three in a row starting at Atlanta, then Clemson, then North Carolina. So I guess every road trip has to begin with that first game, and we travel to Atlanta. This has never been a real kind venue for us, but uh, we had a, had a way to beat the Yellow Jackets this year. Well, in, in this particular game, I thought our guys really rose to the occasion. Defensively, I thought we were locked in. We pushed the ball here in transition early, and, uh, got a, a, a nice basket in transition. And, you know, Phil Kofi is still trying to shake off the rust of, 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 of uh, missing some practices. You know, there's Chris Kamaji, you know, really keeping his foot down and, and, and giving a double pump fake. There's no doubt that that was very, very important. Vassells came home and had an outstanding game. Uh, he seemed to be uh, really, really coming into his own. He's playing with a lot more confidence. Defensively, you see him uh, getting a block there. That's a tremendous uh, effort on his part. For a 6'9 guy like uh, Raekwon Gray, he leads the fast break, an open look for David Nichols. Points in transition, key to college basketball. We had a period in, in the game where these these are our rotation guys, and we have four players on the court uh, that, that were non-starters, and they gave us a tremendous lift during this period. Yeah, we go uh, four different players in the alley-oop to Devin Vassell, one of three Georgia kids on this basketball team that played so well in Atlanta. Great decision-making, though, by our point guard. Uh, uh, Nichols, uh, he, he came off the bench and made good decisions. You see our guys really playing themselves. I like, you like to see that. Raekwon Gray gave you some good minutes at both ends of the court, didn't he? Great ball movement, making the extra pass, uh, one more that we like to call it. So you have guys that seem to be buying in and playing unselfish with unselfish spirit. Two triples, and Cooper says, if you can do it, I can do it too. Two three-point shots by the big fella. Well, we had difficulty with their zone uh, when, we, when they played us in Tallahassee. In, in, in this particular game, I thought we moved the ball a lot better. Usually, P.J. Savoy is shooting three-point shots, but a nice alley-oop pass. Chris Kamaji is playing the best basketball in his career, Coach. Well, he's no doubt that he's gaining more and more confidence. Our players are looking forward, looking for him more, and he's making more effort to contribute. Terrence. Great pass. Once again, looking for him to spend, being in front of the, 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 the basket. Now you see him making a, a big block. Chris has really given us a tremendous help. Florida State dominating in the uh, first half. We led by as many as 16. And here's your senior guard driving from the right lane with a little reverse layup. Left hand layup, that's not always easy to do when you're right handed. Zone defenses have presented problems to us in the past, but not today. Tremendous unselfish play uh, by Carmageli. Uh, ball inside out, three pointers are always high percentage shots. Andrew Cavangeli, our leading scorer going into the ball game, and you didn't know he was an assist guy, but he certainly is. S second half highlights, Coach, what a nice pass. There's no doubt that uh, uh, Chris, Chris Kamaji and, and Fiondu are really, really playing good ball for us. And great look by Trent Forrest, I believe, finding a un uh, uncontested uh, uh, field call for under, under the basket. Trent Forrest won a three assist, a no-look pass. And Defense is going to lead to a slam dunk by Terrence Mann. Anytime you can get the second, get the second half started off with a, with a dunk, that's really, really good for your team, good for your morale. Florida State forcing a turnover, another steal by the Seminoles coach, and uh, defense leads to immediate offense. 
MJ Walker, scoreless in the first half. He heats up here in the second half, folks. He's going to finish with nine points. Another Atlanta guy playing yeah. with a lot of yeah. confidence. Speaking of which, he could shoot the three, he could also drive the basket. That's what you saw in him in high school. Then. There's no doubt that he's really, really playing for a lot more confidence. He's a sophomore, and he's getting better and better with each game. Yeah, he had family there watching the ball game, his hometown Jonesboro, and again, another block shot, a scoop, and an easy deuce at the other end. There's Fee Captain Gelly. Whenever you can get hustle baskets, those uh, energy baskets, uh, you really, really let us, it really excites the, the crowd. That's a big time block by MJ. The block at the other end, it's Fee Kevin Gelly. Wow, he almost <laughs> he almost didn't dunk that one. I'm sure the players will be teasing him. Uh, we're halfway through the second half, and P.J. Savoy says, hey, I've made a three-point shot today. Let me see what I can do. P.J. with another triple. Left-handed cross-the-court pass. <laughs> now, that, I haven't seen that pass. No. Left-hand cross-the-court pass. No. I'm sure I have to mention that to him. Yeah, David Nichols with uh, three three-point shots of the game. Really great elevation to go up and get the High pass and a stick in by Devin Vassell. He had 11 points, a career high, and he led the team in scoring for the first time. Well, there's no doubt that he was locked in. I'm sure that being at home with him means an awful lot. Wow, there you go, hustle, another hustle basket, energy basket. We need those. Offensive rebound, we control the boards, and now the Green Viper gang is in the game, and let's watch the first career dunk by Harrison Prieto. Never dunked a ball in his life. Harrison is the weatherman on our team, yeah. so our players are really happy with him. Yeah, cold front coming through in Atlanta, Georgia, and Harrison Prieto gets his first career slam dunk. Coach, we shoot the ball not as well as we have been, but we held Georgia Tech to a season low 27%. Our defensive uh, energy was tremendous. Uh, wow, we didn't shoot that well from three point. I thought the way the, the highlight film yeah, looked, looked like, like we, we missed a shot. Looked <laughs> like we made every one of them, Coach, but the defense was key in this ball game. Number one, it's the, the, the lowest percentage. Field goal shooting by an opponent this year by the summer, and the lowest shoot, shooting percentage by Georgia Tech this whole season. But there's no doubt that defensively, we felt that we struggled with them uh, when they came to Tallahassee. And we had to be locked in a little bit more, if you remember correctly. They cut the league down in Tallahassee to single digits there late in the game, and we ended up extending the lead to 10 points, and we had a 10 point victory, but uh, the game was a lot closely contested. Florida State led from almost start to finish in Atlanta, Georgia, and notched win number seven in a row against an ACC foe. We go for the school record eight in a row against the Clemson Tigers. We'll have highlights of that game coming up a little later on in the show. Coach, we saw the tallest player to ever play basketball in Florida State history is Chris Camaggi. We saw him for the last three ball games playing probably his best basketball. We're going to have a chance to visit with him in just a moment. But well, Chris has, has really come on strong here as of late, and I'm, I'm interested to see the feature. Welcome back to our show. We promised a chance for you to visit and meet Chris Kamaja, the tallest player to ever play a sport at Florida State University. Seven foot four inches tall. He's from Chad, Coach. That's a landlocked country in Northern Africa. Well, Chad uh, does not play a lot of basketball. No. <laughs> you know, they don't have a lot of basketball teams. And he grew up playing soccer and uh, came to America and started playing basketball late. Uh, He's still a little behind, he's catching up, but he's coming on strong here now that he's moving toward the end of his senior year. Let's visit with Chris Kamaji. Watching the Florida State men's basketball team, one would expect to witness elite student athletes competing with intensity. Yet there's one player that towers above the rest. Gene Mark Chris Kumaji, a long name with an even larger frame. He's been a guy that's always been willing to put the time in and to, uh, and to try to add to his uh, talent and ability to not just be a tall guy, to be a tall guy that can really play basketball. You know, he has a great touch uh, for a guy his size. Uh, his hook shot is great. His turnaround jump shot is great. Um, you know, he can score the ball from anywhere, you know, in that paint. Knowles with a nine-point advantage down the court. Right. Standing at seven foot four, Kumaji is the tallest student athlete in school history. As the seminal starting center, he plays a vital role with his innate ability to grab rebounds and block shots with authority. It allows you to be able to penetrate and open up for a pass. Uh, Kumaji with another block. Oh, he's a very important part of our team, and he's uh, given us what we need. Sometimes it's rebounds, sometimes it's block shots. Sometimes it's just energy and, and uh, communication with his teammates. 
During his time in Tallahassee, the senior has been part of a consistent four-year rise, lifting the program quite literally to new heights. No matter what's going on, you know, my role is just to like, you know, be a leader to, you know, to this team, help, help uh, the young guys talk to them and stuff like that. Despite his current success, things haven't always been easy for Kumaji. Born and raised in Injamina, Chad, the big man didn't pick up a basketball until the age of 15. Growing up in like a third world country, you don't get all the things that kids get here. Like, you know, we grew up like differently and you just learn to like appreciate and be more grateful for everything that you have. He told me it was rough. You know, he had a lot going on. Um, he went from house to house, from his uncle to his grandmother, uh, his mom, his dad. So he was always traveling, you know, going up and down that country. It wasn't until Kamaji moved to the United States in 2013 and enrolled in Montverde Academy that he began to develop his game. So coming out of there kind of helped uh, elevate his development and, uh, and give him a base to know how hard he was going to have to work when he got to college. Throughout his freshman season, the big man displayed glimpses of his potential despite weighing only 220 pounds. For this reason, Kumaji placed a relentless focus on physical improvement. Whoa, whoa what was that too? What was that? Bubbles back to your all time high. Now the Seminoles starting center stands at a solid 270 pounds, and the results have spoken for themselves. Chris has been a guy that's been the guy that's hungry his whole career to, to improve and to become uh, the best basketball player he can be. All of what, from what he's been through, just, you know, from his childhood all the way up to now, just, you know, forming him to what, it, you know, having that uh, dog type, uh, you know, mentality, just going to the games and giving it all he's got. As the Garnet and Gold head into the season stretch run, Kamaji looks to provide a powerful spark for his team. Chris has never been the guy that's kind of been in a lead role until now, and uh, when he really plays with great passion and enthusiasm and energy, it really inspires our guys. Hoping for another deep tourney run in March, the Knowles will need the experienced veteran to take advantage of his tremendous size and stretch. The goal is definitely winning the national championship. When it's all said and done, Kumaji's legacy will not be defined by Florida State's final result, but instead on the gigantic impact he's already made on the program. Touting a relentless work ethic and unique athleticism, the sky is truly the limit for this big man. I'm Blake Devine for The Leonard Hamilton Show. We're talking Florida State basketball on the Leonard Hamilton Show. Thanks for joining us today. We promised you highlights of the FSU Clemson game. And uh, Coach, let's roll that videotape and get a look at how we played Clemson at Little John Coliseum. Now, a lot of teams go to Little John and don't come back happy. <laughs> well, this is a very challenging place to play. The crowd was really into the game. Uh, there's no doubt that we, it was an important game for both teams. We both started off kind of nip, nick and pack, tack and back and forth with each other. We got a little spurt there toward the end of the first half, but th there's no doubt that this was an important game for both teams, and we, get, we got the edge right there toward the end of the first half. First and only tie of the ball game, the slam dunk by Phil Kofer, and on this three-point shot from Terrence Mann, we're going to take the lead and never let it go. Well, Terrence uh, is shooting close to 50, maybe over 50% from three the last number of games, so he's really, really improving the perimeter out. From the shooting. Fiondu Kevin Geller does not start. He's not started a game in his career. He comes in off the bench and he's going to spark our offensive attack and also our defense. He played well on both ends of the court. Well, in our system, he is a starter. He's just not in the game at the, at the tip. Uh, we have a different system and he's a guy who's really, really played ex excellent basketball. For How about Raekwon Gray grabbing that rebound, hanging on to it? It's my ball and finds an open shooter. Once again, it's a kick out jump shot. And those are high percentage shots and I'm glad to see our guys looking for each other. P.J. Savoy made two of those triples in the ball game and 
Here's Ray Kwong Gray. He's got good range on that jump shot. Well, he's getting better and better. He's showing his poise and, and his confidence. And uh, our players, you're seeing him grow up right in front of your eyes. Yeah, that's his only basket of the ball game, but a big basket as some of those maintain a lead in this contest. A nice drive down there. Trent Forrest, a slam dunk, Coach. What a play. Well, that was a very athletic play, no doubt about that, especially I think it ignited our players, and I think you're going to see them get more and more excited. Yeah, Clemson, one of the top shot-blocking teams on the ACC, and Trent says, you're not going to block my two-headed stuff. We watched it three different angles, Coach. Now back to work, and here's MJ Walker with a nice assist to, guess who, Fee Cabangeli. There's no doubt that our guys are looking for each other, and we really like to see that. He, everybody thinks he's going to shoot the ball, and he's throwing the ball back to Tom McGilley, and, and very good assist on this part. See, Kevin Gelly has great hands, Coach, and he's got a nice move here on the low post. A little step back, jump shot, and when he's on, Coach, he's unstoppable. Well, there's no doubt that he's doing a very good job, and he's he maintaining his poise. I know you're glad to see MJ Walker start to come alive. You know, we need his three-point shooting. Well, we? there's no doubt. We expected him to explode any day now. He's really, really giving us tremendous effort. Great tipping at the end of the half by, by requiring great to stand around the rim. Yeah, Florida State has a halftime lead of 38 to 23. Coach on the road, when you're up 15 at halftime, you got to feel pretty good. No doubt about that. And then once again, another reversal kick out jump shot, either kick out from throwing to the post or penetrating and kick out. Those are high percentage shots. Looking for Chris once again. He's running down the floor, seven four, taking the run to the front of the rim. You like to see that. Yeah, seven foot four. Speaking of easy shots, that <laughs> slam dunk. Here he is again. He had a, a, a another outstanding game. That's three in a row that Chris Kamaji's played at a higher level of basketball. Well, we get the ball to him. He's doing his part, and, and, and once again, dude, our guys are sharing the ball, moving the ball, and making the extra pass and creating for each other. For Chris Kamaji, three games in a row and double digit scoring. That's a first for him in his career. Another three-point shot. We shot well at Little John Coliseum. Well, we got the ball out in transition and we are really, really finding the guys and going to the boards. Right now, we, we're in a good place. Have you seen that at practice, Coach? Uh, well, once time. again, uh, never, no, no lead is safe in the ACC. They cut it to seven and I thought we exploded then and moved back ahead. Yeah, just ask Louisville. They led by 23 points, I believe. It's still lost to the Duke Blue Devils. A little step back. We saw it again, that little step back jump shot. Never lead, no, no lead is safe in the ACC. Now, Fiondo Cabin Gelly, he's shooting 47% over the last 10 ball games from three-point land. You'll take that from the big fella. Once again, it's a penetrating pitch type pass. He's uncontested jump shot. Those are shots you, you make when, you, when you're shooting uh, uh, shots uh, in, in shooting practice. 11 of his last 23. This is where he's very effective uh, underneath the basket. And at six foot 10, he's got great wingspan and, and great balance and super hands, coach. Well, we, we, we got to make sure that <laughs> we get the ball inside to those big guys more and more because they're doing a very good job. Now, here's an offensive tip back, and Terrence Mann says, uh, I think I'll score a two-headed dunk. And the Seminoles lead uh, from, uh, what, about the four-minute mark of the first half, take the lead, and uh, never look back. We win 77-64 to at Little John Coliseum. Complete the sweep over two teams in a row, Georgia Tech and now Clemson. Well, we have to come back and enjoy this victory for a little bit and stop preparing for the real big game this weekend. Coach, the 38.9% uh, three-point shooting is as good as you can get on the That is outstanding on the road. No doubt about that. Any time you can shoot 40% on the road, that's what basically it was. You have to be pleased. And with the win, Florida State extends the school's longest ACC win streak to eight in a row. Up next, it's the North Carolina Tar Heels at the Dean Smith Center. We'll talk about the week ahead in just a moment. Boy, we've had a lot of great highlights today. Florida State wins over Georgia Tech and Clemson. And Saturday afternoon at the Dean Smith Center, it's Florida State versus Carolina. Coach, Carolina just took Duke out to the woodshed and beat it this way past week. Carolina is the same Carolina they've been for almost 30, 40 years. They're always are talented. They're always uh, uh, well coached. And when you play them in the Dean Dome, uh, one of the most rich traditional venues in the country, the crowd is knowledgeable. They cheer every play. And it can be very intimidating to a lot of visiting teams. So what we want to do, we want to go in there, maintain our pause, and give it all we got. Coach, before we wrap up the show, a comment. Uh, after the trip to Chapel Hill, we will play the Notre Dame Fighting Irish at the Tucker Center on Monday night. Huge basketball game. We've had great support by the students and by our fans. We've averaged almost 11,000 fans at home. I know you're looking for a big, big turnout for the Monday game. No doubt about that. It's a one-day turnaround. So we played uh, North Carolina on Saturday and uh, uh, Notre Dame on Monday. 
with very little preparation, so we might need a little energy from the crowd to give us a little extra boost. Let's see if we have another streak to extend as the Knowles take on Notre Dame on Monday. That's our show for this week. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for your support of Florida State basketball. For Coach Leonard Hamilton, I'm Gene Dekaroff saying, Go Seminoles! This has been the Leonard Hamilton Show, brought to you by Powerade, the official sports drink of the Florida State Seminoles. Powerade, power through. And by the Florida Lottery, over 30 billion and counting to education. Just imagine.